Hey everyone, this is Reinderson Cardoso from the Meta Analysis Academy and in today's video I'm going to explain to you all about snowballing. I'm going to tell you how this is a really effective tool for you to add in your systematic review and meta analysis to make sure your search doesn't miss any studies. We'll cover what snowballing is, how it works, and why it's such an interesting strategy to have in your toolbox for meta analysis. But before I do that, if you're new to the channel, welcome to the Meta Analysis Academy. In this channel, we talk about tools for systematic reviews and meta analysis, but also we talk a lot about medical career, about opportunities in research, clinical training. So if you're interested in this kind of content, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button so you stay tuned in to future videos in the Meta Analysis Academy. So let's get right into snowballing in the context of meta analysis. Snowballing is a method to identify relevant relevant studies to add to your systematic reviews and meta-analysis. It involves finding one key article that fits the eligibility criteria, the inclusion criteria of your meta-analysis, and then from this key study, going both backward and forward in time to identify additional studies that meet your eligibility criteria. This ensures that you capture a broad and comprehensive review of all the studies that meet your eligibility criteria. So let's look at a very practical example to explain this concept. Let's say that you want to do a systematic review and meta-analysis on the effect of a particular medication in the recovery of patients after cardiac surgery. As you develop this idea for systematic review and meta-analysis, you come across one study that fits your inclusion criteria. Let's say you come across the study by Desai et al. published in 2018. This study was published in the Annals of Cardiac Anesthesia and again, it is one trial that fits your inclusion criteria for your potential meta-analysis. So then you want to include the study by Desai in your paper, in your publication. This is a highly relevant article that fits your topic of interest. Now for snowballing, this study by Desai et al. will become the starting point to identify other studies. The first step is to check all the references of this particular trial. As you do that, you will see if there are any additional studies that meet the eligibility criteria for your meta-analysis and were listed, were cited as a reference in the study by Desai. This is called backward snowballing because essentially you look back in time for studies that were published prior to, previous to the study by Desai at all. So again, let's make this very practic. In the study published by Desai, reference number 24 is of interest. As you can see here on the screen, reference number 24 is by Abbasilar and Dogen. And this study by Abbasilar and Dogen was published in 2013 in a, in a journal called Heart Surgery Forum. And the study by Abbasilar and Dogen does meet eligibility criteria also. Actually, this is not a hypothetical example. This is a real example. This is a meta analysis that was published by Rafael Ayala, one of our Meta-Analysis Academy students. He's a cardiac surgeon in Germany and published this paper uh, on uh, the use of levosimendan prior to cardiac surgery. So this is backward snowballing. You essentially check the references of the included study to see if you find other studies to include. So these references will lead you to earlier studies in the topic. By reviewing these, you can find studies related to this topic that you're interested in and adding in your meta-analysis. Next, we have forward snowballing. Forward snowballing involves looking into future studies that have cited the study of interest. Again, let's look at the example by Desai et al. This study was published in 2018, but it was referenced by a future trial in this example by Kumar et al. published in 2020. The study by Kumar was published two years later, after Desai, in the Asian Cardiovascular and Thoracic Annals. And this study by Kumar added Desai 2018 as one of its references. So this is forward snowballing. You find one study, in this case Desai, and you look forward in time to future trials that have cited this study. Okay, now that you understand backward and forward snowballing, the big question is how do you do it in practical terms? You're going to use different tools to do this. You can use, for example, PubMed or Google Scholar. 
In the picture that you see here from Google Scholar, you see here the article by the side, our starting point for this example. And you can see that in Google Scholar, there's an option here that says cited by 24. You click here and you will see future studies that have cited the site. So again, what you're doing here is you're doing forward snowballing by looking at this list. There's another platform that is really amazing to do backward and forward snowballing. It's called Research Rabbit. This is a free platform where you can plug in that starting paper, in this example, the study by the side, and then you can do in the same platform backward and forward snowballing. It's really phenomenal. So next time you're doing a meta-analysis, in addition to doing the search in databases like PubMed, like Embase, make sure you do backward and forward snowballing. And you can even consider using Research Rabbit for this. By doing the forward and backward snowballing, by checking the references of the included studies and by looking at future studies that have cited the papers that you included, again, backward and forward snowballing, you expand your network of relevant articles and you do this in a super efficient way. This comprehensive approach does not substitute searching the primary databases, but it does ensure that you don't miss important work that may not have appeared in your initial search, maybe because there was a problem with the original search strategy. So backward and forward snowballing can actually help you to test the efficacy, the quality of the search strategy that you developed. In future videos, we will discuss the best tools the best practices for developing amazing search strategies for PubMed, Cochrane, Embase, and others. And as we do that, one of the ways that we will use to test the efficacy of our search is going to be snowballing. So if you want to learn all about systematic reviews and meta-analysis, if you want to get more content on evidence-based medicine, research, career discussions in general, make sure to stay tuned in to future videos here in the Meta-Analysis Academy. Subscribe to our channel so you don't miss anything. Also, if you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below. We'd be happy to help you with your questions on systematic reviews and meta-analysis. That's it for today. I hope to see you in future videos here in our channel.